Hello students, welcome to physics unit for key point revision video where I will swiftly go through the important topics to remember. Let's start then. The first topic is momentum. In momentum, you have to remember the total momentum before collision is equals to the total momentum after collision. You also have to remember if an object is coming from a different direction, we have to use a negative sign to denote that. Here you can see the object coming to the left is given a negative sign and the object coming to the right is given a positive sign. We also have to remember if two objects move together, we have to add their masses. If you are having issues with the sign, take this rule of thumb. If the object is moving right, use a positive sign. If the object is moving left, use a negative sign. Let's move on to particle momentum. Here are a few formulas that will help you. E equals to half mv square v equals to p by m, kinetic energy equals to p square by 2m. Also remember, elastic energy is when the kinetic energy is conserved after collision. If, by any chance, the kinetic energy is not conserved, it is an inelastic collision. Impulse is equals to force into time. Now the next topic, circular motion. Circular motion is a new topic in A-levels but we have done component of forces in AS. When an object is rotated, V is its actual velocity. This velocity can be divided into two parts, horizontal velocity and vertical velocity. Here are a few formulas that we need to understand. The speed at which the object is moving around a particular spot is angular velocity. It is called velocity because it has a fixed direction. As the object is moving in a circular motion, it might increase its speed. That is called angular acceleration. The path that the object takes is called the length of the arc. You can see the corresponding formulas written below. Centipetal force is a force that the object experiences while moving in a circular manner. Here are two different formulas for centipetal force. Some of you might face issues drawing a vector diagram. The simplest way to draw a resultant vector is to add one vector at the end of another. After it is done, just join the lines. For example, we started at this point. My vector 1 ends here. So I will start my vector 2 from this side. Then my vector 2 ends here. Now this is my starting point and this is my ending point. I will just join the lines and give the appropriate direction. Moving on, the next topic is the electric field. Electric fields can form between two charged particles or metal plates. Here we have used A and B, two metal plates. We can see that the blue lines are equidistant from each other. That means the electric field is constant. As equidistant lines give constant electric fields. Here are two formulas for electric field. Moving on. In the book, we can see the Millikan's oil droplet experiment. Here, you need to understand that V is terminal velocity and eta is the coefficient of viscosity. The next topic is radial electric fields. Radial means circular. If a small point has a charge, the electric field moves away from it in a circular manner. In this diagram, we can see that as we go further, the red lines move away from each other. Due to this, the electric field strength also decreases. That is why you can see the gap between the blue dotted lines are increasing. Moving on, here are two different formulas that the students get confused about. One is the electric field with the R square, another is the electric potential with just R. Moving on, what if we have two different charged particles? This is the formula for that. Q1 and Q2 are the charges of those particles. Make sure to maintain the negative sign for the negative particles. Moving on, if the force has a negative answer, this means attraction. 
If the force has a positive answer, it means repulsion. The next is a new topic named capacitors. Capacitors are tiny objects that can store charge. This is the formula for capacitors and this is the electrical symbol. The energy stored on the capacitor is given by E equals to half QV. So the area under the VQ graph gives energy. Now this is an important concept. If capacitors are kept in parallel, we just have to add them up. If the capacitors are set in series, we have to use this formula. As you can see, this is the exact opposite of the resistor formulas. In parallel, the voltage across the capacitors remain the same. In series, the voltage is divided among the capacitors. These are the important capacitor discharging graphs. At about 5 temp period, they discharge 99%. That is why the graphs do not touch yet. Moving on. This is the capacitor charging graph. These six graphs are very important. Time constants are a very important concept for capacitors. Any capacitor can charge and discharge very fast. During the initial stages, they can discharge or charge 63.2%. The time it takes for the capacitor to charge or discharge 63.2% is called one time constant. Time constants are denoted by tau. Here you can see the graph reaches 63.2% in the first time constant, which is 1T. A capacitor will always reach 99% at 5 tau, or we can say 5 time constants. Here is a quick formula for finding charge. As we go down below, we can find similar formulas for charge, voltage, current, and even the number of particles in radioactive decay. These formulas are all very important. You can just remember one, they are all the same. The next topic is magnetic flux. In general, we can say magnetic flux equals to magnetic flux density into area. However, we are assuming that the theta is 90 degree. That means the magnetic and electric field has an angle of 90 degree. Magnetic flux density can be also called magnetic field strength. Moving on. This is the flux linkage formula. The next topic is about Fleming's rules. Fleming's left hand rule is used to find the force of direction on the wire. Fleming's right hand rule is used to find the direction of current on the wire. Moving on, there are also several equations to find the force on the wire. In the mass spectrometer, when a charged particle enters a magnetic field, it changes its direction. As you can see in the diagram, the direction becomes curved. Here you can use the formula for centripetal force. This is an important equation that we use a lot in the question paper. This one too. Moving on, the next topic is about electromagnetic induction. We are using electromagnetism to transfer charge from one point to another. This process can also be called induced voltage or induced current. It is because we are inducing voltage on a different wire. There are two types of transformers, step up and step down. Step up transformers increase voltage and step down transformers decrease voltage. This is the circuit diagram of transformers. And this is the formula for finding the voltage or the number of turns of a transformer. Moving on, the next topic is nuclear and particle physics. This is a very common question using alpha particles and gold nucleus. Most alpha particles pass through because the atom is mostly empty space. Some alpha particles deflect because the positive nucleus ripples the positive alpha particles. Only a few turns back. This is because they move straight into the nucleus. Moving on, there are two different types of electron emission process. The photoelectric effect uses light to release electrons and the thermionic effect uses heat to release electrons. A particle accelerator can accelerate any charged particle using electricity. The AC voltage is used to attract the negative electron. As the electron gets in, it is attracted by the next positive cylinder. This process continues and the electron gains immense speed. 
To achieve particle acceleration in a smaller space, we use cyclotron. Inside the cyclotron, the charged particle is rotated using magnetic field. The particle keeps rotating in a circular manner and builds up speed. Then at a point, it is thrown out from the particle accelerator and as it moves out, it hits the target. Here is the formula for finding the frequency. Some important well-used particle detectors are GM tube to find radiation, bubble chamber to detect particles. Inside the bubble chamber, we can see traces of the charged particle. The next topic is the standard module of particles. Here we have to memorize the names and the charges of the subatomic particles. Here are some new keywords. Quarks, the six fundamental particles with strong nuclear force. Leptons, the six fundamental particles without any strong nuclear force. Baron, it has three quarks. Mason, it has one quark and one antiquark. Kaon is a mason created by up or down quark or antiquark, strange and anti-strange quark. Hadron particles react with strong nuclear force. Exchange boson means transfer of force. The charges must be conserved. Here you can see the total amount of charge on the left hand side is the same as the total amount of charge on the right hand side. We can use simple addition and subtraction for this case. I will be dropping unit 6 revision soon, so subscribe to the channel. That's pretty much it. Please comment down below if you want to know about any specific topic. Hopefully this video has given you an idea about physics unit 4. Bye then, good luck on your exams.